Today on our 2013 Volvo XC70, we will be taking a look and installing the Kurt trailer hitch receiver, part number 13266. Now we will go ahead and get a few measurements to help you in selecting ball mounts, bike racks, and cargo carriers. From the center of the pinhole to the outermost edge of the bumper, it's going to be about 5 inches. From the top of the receiver tube to the ground, it's going to be about 13 and 3 quarter inches. And this is what our trailer hitch is going to look like once it's installed. Nice, sleeked, and tucked away underneath the bottom side of the bumper. The main mounting hardware attached to the bumper on the back side with the drop down like so. It's going to have that nice clean look and you'll still be able to get any kind of accessory on the back side of it, whether that be your ball mount, bike rack, or cargo carrier. Having those nice tie downs and 5 8 inch pinholes through either side, giving you a 350 pound tongue weight and 3500 pound trailer towing capacity. All right, with our vehicle raised up off the ground so you can easily see where you need to remove the rear fascia and the rear bumper. We'll start off with the rear fascia at these two points here. We'll go ahead and take a 10 millimeter socket to remove the first of the two nuts. Go ahead and repeat that on the other side. Now once you have that, those two rear fasteners off the back fascia, we'll then move over here to the passenger side wheel well and start with the removal of these four T20 Torx bits. Once you have the four fasteners removed, we'll repeat that same process on the driver's side wheel well. We'll then need to pull out the wheel guard located here. And if you need a tool to help you with this, you can use a flat blade screwdriver or a trim tool like this one. We'll go ahead and repeat the same process on the other side. Now that we have those two wheel guards on the driver and passenger side unfastened from their mounts, locate the two bumper stops or bump stops here on the bottom. We'll then need to remove those. We'll use the same T20 Torx bit drive to remove the fasteners and the bump stops from the door hatch. We'll also repeat this on the other side. Now we'll go ahead and pull out on the wheel guard on the driver's side. And we'll go ahead and start that process by removing the bumper. Bring your hand underneath of the wheel guard and the wheel well side here. Pull out to start to release the fasteners. Once they come undone, we'll then work it back and work the bumper off. Now with uh, an extra set of helping hands, we're going to have them hold up the other side, the driver's side that we pulled off, and we'll go ahead and remove the passenger side. Same process, start behind the wheel well and go ahead and pull out and away, and then bring it back off the vehicle. We will then disconnect the wiring harness here. Go ahead and press in on the tab to remove the wiring harness. And go ahead and set the bumper off to the side. All right, with us in the rear hatch, we're going to lift up on the mat if you have one inside your vehicle. Go ahead and set that out of the way. Lift up on the rear hatch and the piece here. Once you have those out of the way, we'll go ahead and hook it up. All right, now with access to our spare tire, we're going to locate the bracket on the back passenger side that holds the anchor mount for our to emergency tow hook that goes in this hole here. There's going to be a bolt on the back side of that bracket located right here. Now we'll go ahead and remove that bolt that's located underneath of the bracket using a 13 millimeter open end. And please note that you want to do this and remove this prior to the removal of the six bolts on the bumper. And you won't need to completely loosen it, but just get it loose enough to where the bracket is loose on the other side. All right, with our first bolt removed, you can see how that's going to be loose on the back side. And we loosened up this one too so it would move around so you can see where the importance is with that bracket on the back side. Once we pull this out, we'll be able to pull that down, the bumper down and around it 
without having to pull it all the way out because it would be a headache to try to get that bolt back in and sandwich it back in between. All right, now we're gonna locate the six fastening bolts for the bumper and remove them. You're gonna have one above each exhaust tip on the driver and passenger side as well as two up top on the driver's side and two on the passenger side. All right, we're gonna go ahead and remove the bottom one next and go ahead and have our extra set of hands help us hold up the bumper. All right, go ahead and pull out on the bottom side of the bumper and lower it down and out of the way. And we'll go ahead and set the bumper off to the side while we mount up or start the mount up of our receiver. Now go ahead and remove the tow eye hook and pull it out of the way. This will prep us for placing in our receiver hitch inside the bumper beam and then sandwiching it all down. All right, now that we have our receiver hitch in place, we're going to take our bumper beam and place it over the top of our receiver hitch. We're gonna line up the holes and then place it all up at one time, sandwiching everything together. So roll your bumper beam over the top of your receiver hitch and line up all your holes. Once you have your holes lined up, go and raise it up into place with an extra set of hands. And then start threading it in. You just want to hand tighten these so it holds up the bumper so we can get the other tow hook eye in place and the other bolts. Take your comical tooth washer and your provided bolt, threading it into the hole to hold it in place. All right, now over here on the passenger side, we do have our bottom one in place. But we're gonna place our other two bolts in place over the top of your tow eye hook here. We're gonna go ahead and thread it through and start our bolt on the other side. Once we have our bolt started on the other side, we're then going to place our other bolts through and tighten it all down. Take your conical tooth washer and your bolt and place it through sandwiching everything together. Again, hand tighten it until you get them both in place and then we'll thread them both down and then torque them all to installation specifications. All right, we'll go ahead and take our 11 16 and tighten it down. And we'll finish tightening down the rest of them. We'll go ahead and tighten back down our tow hook eye bolt here on the back side. Now with our bumper and hitch in place and our fasteners hand tightened, we're going to go ahead and torque to manufacturer specifications. All right, now we're ready to go ahead and put our bumper back in place. We're going to get an extra set of hands to hold it while we reattach the light assembly on the back plugging it back into the manufacturer hardware and setting our bumper back into place. Go ahead and place the hatch bumpers back into place and tighten those back down using the T20 Torx bit. Just like so. Go ahead and repeat that on the driver's side. Now with us here on the passenger side, we'll go ahead and replace the Torx bit fasteners now we'll go ahead and trim the fascia on either side of the receiver tube so the slant here rests on the inside of the bumper so we can mount our bumper back up to the attachment points. Go ahead and place in a straight edge and then we're just going to score it and pull it out of the way. With that scored, we'll now cut across the top, go ahead and fold it over and remove it from the vehicle. Go ahead and take your factory hardware and mount it back up to the attachment points located there. Securing the bottom of the fascia back to the attachment points. And now we'll complete our look and installation of the Kurt Class 3 trailer hitch, part number 13266 
on our 2013 Volvo XC70.